Well, welcome everyone to our latest episode of Jim and Java. Well, hello everyone. I'm Jim Dempsey and I'm excited to be here for another episode of Jim and Java where our desire is to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. If you're interested in communicating with us, sending in questions, submitting questions, you can always do that in the comment section below or make sure that you reach out to us at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or if you'd wish to send a personal email, you can do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. I'm excited about this first broadcast. We've got a couple exciting topics to discuss today. Well, our first topic today is from Annie in Winchester, Virginia. Annie asks, what's the difference between a mission and a vision statement? Well, Annie, last week, if you watched our broadcast, we talked about creating a good mission statement and oftentimes a good mission and a good vision statement work hand in hand but the confusion comes up is when people think they're exactly the same thing because they really serve two different purposes and it's important for us to remember what those two purposes are. Well let me explain just a little bit the difference between these two. A mission defines the organization's strategies objectives and accomplishments and what they hope is the outcome or desired result from their, uh, their projects and their programs. A vision statement is really focused more towards the future and where you hope your organization will be going. Oftentimes a vision statement is used more for the future and where the organization is headed and for marketing purposes. It, we, time, we sometimes find that a vision statement is a little bit more um, uh, crisper, definitely is shorter for, uh, for that. Uh, a good mission statement will focus in on what we do and who we do it to, and then, as I said, how do we serve them in what particular ways. And uh, a, a vision statement in and itself a vision statement will focus more on what are the hopes and dreams and desires of the organization. What problems uh, are they solving uh, for the organization as a whole? And uh, who are what are they uh, inspiring in, in this change? So some great examples of submission vision statements are as following. Let's read the Tesla mission and vision statement. They're a pretty progressive and upstart company right now. To accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That's the mission of the organization. The vision is to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles. You see the difference between the two? One was focused in on today. The other was focused in on where they hope to go in the future. Okay, let's take a look at Amazon, a very popular company today. Let's start with their mission. We strive to offer our customers the lowest possible prices the best available selection and the utmost convenience. Did they, do they achieve that? Let's look at their vision. To be Earth's most customer-centric company where customers can find and discover anything they might want to buy online. Okay, there you go. That's two. Uh, let's take a look at uh, LinkedIn. Some of you I know use LinkedIn. I'm out there. Uh, the mission is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. Their vision, to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. There you go. Uh, Google, very popular as well. Uh, the mission of Google is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. The vision, to provide access to the world's information in one click. So does that make a little sense, Annie? The, uh, the first mission focuses in on the current state, the current situation, uh, once again addresses um, uh, what they hope to accomplish, who they're, who they're reaching, and what the outcome is uh, through so their services, their audience, and their outcome. And then the vision focuses in on what they want their organization to look like or how they want it to exist in the future. 
So, Annie, I hope that helps answer your question, and uh, we'll move on to the next question. Our next question is from James in Boulder, Colorado, and James asked the question, is an annual report essential for an organization to produce each year? Well, James, I know of a lot of great organizations that produce annual reports every year, and uh, I also know a number of great organizations that don't produce an annual report every year. And I don't really believe there's a, an exact right or wrong. Some of your, uh, your donors really wish to find out what is the financial position, the financial state of your organization. Is it sound? And if your organization has the luxury to be able to have an audit every year, you can use those findings to produce the financial statements that your partners may request or even demand. But if you don't have that luxury, if you're a small organization and can't afford an audit, uh, certainly not every year, but maybe even every other year, uh, then you've got to decide, do you still want to produce an annual report? Um, one of the things that I think many organizations, the opportunity that they miss, are the development opportunities that exist in an annual report, the fundraising opportunities from that. Yes, our, our partners want and even demand the financial statements from us to ensure that we're a sound organization, but that document allows you to also emphasize stories and connecting individuals whose lives have been changed by the organization. I create a hybrid annual report that has important, probably four important ingredients to the success of our organization. But I also include in there stories and photos of individuals who have been impacted and whose lives have been changed by the organization. And frankly, all finances in a report gives you is, is a peace of mind for the partner that you are doing a good work and that you've continued to do a good work. It validates that their giving was sound. But what I like to do is I like to present opportunities for the future. And I believe that testimonials, stories, photos, actual stories and actual photos of individuals whose lives were changed will actually give you an opportunity to be able to ask people for future giving and ask people an opportunity to give in that particular mailing. So just sending out a financial statement in and of itself without an opportunity to give is done all the time, but I believe it's a missed opportunity from my standpoint. I believe that there's a lot of organizations that really could be getting a much bigger bounce and even pay for the cost of producing a, a, a document like an annual report and also of mailing that annual report through though the uh, giving opportunities are presented in that letter. It doesn't have to be a very uh, assertive ask. It could be a passive ask. Uh, you could just simply include a response card and a response envelope in there. Or you could just include an envelope alone. That gives people the impression that, oh, I've got an opportunity to be able to give here if I want to. If your annual report does not say that this is a worthwhile organization doing great work, I would not produce that document. It's not worth it. Um, and frankly, to a large degree, I'm not sure if the financial numbers are necessary enough to be able to warrant having a document. Remember, the you've got two types of donors or partners out there, logical givers and emotional givers. I believe that that document, if you produce it, should incorporate information for the logical giver, that's typically the financial statements, and then the stories for the emotional giver. You need to have both. And it doesn't have to be a large document. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a printed document. You could send it over as a finely crafted email with an attachment, or you could post something on your website that would serve the same purposes. One of the things that we're going to be testing this year is we're going to be putting a QR code 
on a on our mailing that will allow people to go to get further information about if they like the stories and the information that they saw here's an opportunity for them to get more information and of course in that will also be opportunities for them to give so james i hope that helped to answer your question there's no firm right or wrong but there definitely are some things that you should consider and that make it important well, that's the conclusion of this broadcast of Jim and Java. Once again, if you need to um, ask your question yourself, we always solicit that question. We will ask every, we will answer every question that you have. So submit that below in the comments section. Make sure that uh, if you prefer Twitter, go out to um, at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And of course, if your question is a little bit more confidential, uh, please feel free to reach out to me at developmentaffectedmissm at gmail.com. And as I always say, we wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.